Okay, in, uh, in this video section, what we'll be talking about is the uh, first out, our first in, first out, which is the FIFO. Um, we had a request to do a FIFO, so uh, what I want to do is actually start it from scratch. And so what I've done is I've actually made a Patreon, um, a Patreon uh, file. This is version 20, so um, it doesn't really matter what version you're on. Just know that uh, you know it's going to be doing a uh, a file load and a file unload. So um, as you know, I mean I'm going to change my task um, just because that's that's kind of the way I do things. Uh, periodic task. I feel like if you can't time something periodically, then probably don't need to be. You know, I mean it's it's not controlled properly. So that's just my opinion. Um, but uh, a lot of I've seen a lot of trouble come out of continuous tasks. But um, anyway, so not to get too far into that, let's open up the situation. So um, we got a new rung here. What we're going to do is first and foremost, we're going to look at where our, our file shift right here. You have a uh, a file load or FIFO load, and then you have a FIFO unload. Now, let's go ahead and look at and kind of analyze these real quick. So, first and foremost, we'll go ahead and grab that one. And then we'll go ahead and grab the uh, load and unload. So, now the source um, is going to be the source, the data that we want to load into the uh, FIFO itself. The um, FIFO obviously is where the data is stored. The control itself is the control uh, of the um, name of the instruction. In this case, it's going to be the name of the FIFO, meaning you'll use that for the load and unload. So in our case, what we'll do is we'll call this uh, FIFO, uh, and then we'll do control. So that way we keep it really, really simple, right? There is no complex scenario to this. Um, so we basically keep it as simple as we need to. Um, and there, you know, there's no real, real reason to, uh, you know, get it any further than that. So, um, what we'll do is make sure we put that in the control. And again, that we want to share those two that, that way. If we load in one, you know, we basically want to unload in the other. So act as a pair. So you're basically, if you look at it, you're like almost taking um, in, in one and out the other, right? So, um, and you're using that under one, one control element, right? So let's just say our dent, um, in this case, we're going to use dents, right? We're going to use an array of data, right? So let's just say our array is going to be 20, but let's go ahead and make it first, right? Um, so let's go ahead and say uh, FIFO array. Okay, so this array we're going to put and we'll make this an array of 20. So we'll put that in there and we'll obviously start at zero. Um, actually, we need to put that here. I'm sorry. So our source, um, we're going to have our source be like a, like a timer or something, uh, like a free running timer, because I don't really have anything else uh, besides that, you know, as far as like, this is all emulated. So I want to bas basically just load in stuff that um, is free running, uh, just to, just to kind of show data being passed back and forth. That's really all we're trying to accomplish. So we'll just call that a running timer. Uh, we'll go ahead and I don't know put uh, put that at five seconds. That way it just uh, constantly runs, and then we'll basically have it reset itself. So just basically a real simple scenario, <clears throat> something we can kind of just grab and say this has got some data into it, right? So we can take this and actually put it up here so the ACC is going to go into 
load into our array, right? So our length is 20, right? So now we have our length of 20, and then um, down here we have our length of 20. So the FIFO itself, again, is going to be the data that we were loading. We want to load it into a destination. Now the destination, again, um, we'll get, we can look at that. I'll sh basically show you real quick. And this scenario you don't have to have so this right here show plainly shows that the array size you know basically needs to be that big um, in the destination size you don't necessarily you need to have the same size like uh, the same data type but you don't necessarily need to have um, you know a, an array for that matter like say for instance you don't need 20 elements you just need one tag if, if you know in that case so uh, we'll just put uh, FIFO uh, unload and then we'll just like I said we'll just throw it in there like that um, you know no no real complicated scenario going on right here um, so what I would like to do though um, is actually throw in some toggle bits in front of here and I'll, sh I'll actually explain why. So we'll call this test1 and then we'll call this test2. Okay, so let's uh, let's go ahead and actually download that. So we'll go who active, we'll go to the second, our, our processors in slot one. So again, we'll go to download. <clears throat> we'll download this. Sorry about that. Okay, so. Okay, so now we have a free running timer. <clears throat> and both of the EMs, which if so let's let's talk about the em for just a second the em bit means empty okay so if we go looking at this array um, meaning the array doesn't have anything in it right now it's empty so you know just so you're if you ever go to use that bit um, it's basically meaning it's empty right so you have an enable um, you have an enable unload uh, you have a done of course the done is naturally a done um, so if we actually wanted to um, go about and actually load the system in right now what we can do and I'll throw let's let's throw in some one shots just to keep it uh, honest so I don't want it actually uh, I don't want it actually like overriding itself a couple times so let's just throw in some one shots in there Okay, so that let's copy that and then throw that down here as well. Paste, pick a different um, instance of that one shot. Okay, so what we want to do, and you let's so let's bring that back up, and you see that the data that's currently in there is uh, zero, right? So let's bring this up being that it's really, really a short program. And let's go down here, let's bring this down here, and actually show that. And that way we can actually see everything uh, happening. It's not, not very complex at all. Uh, so again, uh, so if I toggle this, then it loads in a, a value. Now when it loads in a value, you see the position actually moved. Uh, it moved one element, right? So if I toggle it again, it's going to move another element in there. And th you see why I used a, a one shot, because if I didn't, it would steady keep indexing. Now I could use the uh, enable bit um, and actually instead of having this and just say every time the enable fired to, uh, you know, go off the scan rate and basically load the whole thing in. Um, 
that's you know a really fast way to do it but I wanted to sh actually do this very slowly so that you could see the transition um, actually when it got indexed so it's, it's actually loading off a timer you know the ACC of the timer it's loading it into position 2 now so it's going to load it into position 2 because that's where we're in so if I index it now it's going to load into position 2 so you see it loaded into position 2 so now it's in position 3 so it's going to load in position 3 and this is basically almost if you look at it like indirect addressing um, this position is pointing at uh, that destination in that array right so this it's it's pointed at position 3 and then right there in the array right so it's almost just like if you've seen my uh, indirect addressing uh, videos then you know exactly what I'm talking about as far as indirectly it's showing it's where, where it's going it's it's pretty obvious when you do this you know that that's gonna happen now that's the load let's look at the unload now the unload itself will actually take out now we're in position 4 right the unload if I toggle this bit will actually take away so you see it actually unloaded so when it unloaded did it unload the last one that got put in if you watch right here you can see so now we have a, a 2027 or we have a 4874 so it's going to load it's going to unload whatever's in the uh, array 0 right because again that's the part that we're using you see that right there right so and obviously it's going to uh, put it in the unload bit um, down here <clears throat> that destination so it's going to put it in, in that that spot now what we can do to, to make all this a lot simpler too and I'll actually um, write it out in like a no operation is we we'll, you know we'll put all the values in so we don't have the tag database down here um, but in the, the same token if we wanted to have this um, taken out and we wanted to say every time uh, the control indexed so every time it went enable then we had the test on and it would just sit there and fill up data so you see why I actually um, did that pretty quick you know as far as that goes um, and now in that case we can sit there if we wanted to keep moving data because see now it's actually done um, so it's not going to move any more data it's not actually moving any data right now so what we can do even though it's steadily is it's, it's trying to index right so what we can do real quick is actually take this out and we can actually come in and use the opposite so we can toggle this and have it actually transitioning data now so it's actually now this is based upon the scan rate so this is very very fair very fast um, what I'm gonna do is actually make a, a another video to show you this a little bit more automated but what I wanted to kind of do is show you the slowdown process and how the first out our first in first out worked um, you know in the basic principle that confuses people is using a different con control understand that you you know the control is basically um, it's basically your point of that's what you are controlling with these instructions right so you're controlling the position that you're using uh, where you're loading the data um, based upon where you're at in the array so if if this control were different then you would not be able to load and unload because you would be looking at a di total different element meaning the control if this was a different tag then these two wouldn't line up that's like having you know 
having two different lines or whatever, you know, I mean, you, you need to have, you need to have these the same so that you're loading into one and you're o unloading into that out of that same one, right? You don't, we don't want to have them different. So that's the main reason I, I kind of wanted to do it, do this slowly and do it in, actually in front of you, but actually in the same token, uh, come back and, and throw it full time and, and throw it as fast as I, uh, you know, I could. So that using the um, enable down here, you know, shows you that you can actually tran transition the data as quick as you want to, as quick as the scan rate should be. And in our case, that would be uh, 75 milliseconds. So, um, and you actually can kind of see that uh, in the timing down here too. So, but um, we won't kind of get too far into that. What I wanted to do is kind of make the first introduction video and then we'll make another video kind of a little bit more automated so that it actually fills this, um, this stuff up and you actually can see the data being translated without having to look at the um, tag database down here. So uh, real quick, I hope that was um, at least a good introduction and that uh, solved some um, you know questions that you had about the FIFO load unload. And um, know that this can be used in many, many different elements. Um, mainly, I tend to use this as um, an array that I average something. Um, I generally use this as, a, as an averaging. So I move uh, a mass amounts of data and then I actually average it. Um, generally speaking, that's what I do with it, like weights um, or either data samples that I collect from uh, how much uh, something's ran through the machine or, or whatever the case may be at that, that given time. Um, especially like in the paper industry, you can actually look at the linear feet that's ran through the machine. So um, again, this is just a simple, very, very simple scenario. Uh, just know that you are um, transitioning data that is a, um, in this case, a dent. Uh, so it's it's real data that's actually going through there and these could again this is just a timer that's going through there but it could be weights it could be linear foot uh, it could be anything that you can possibly think of that would be you know a, a number that you need to collect data from and uh, use it as far as a load and unload as you want to as quick or as slow as you want it to um, you don't need to have to have it quick like it's doing right now you could you just need to have it working right and i just choose i, I chose uh tw an array of 20 just as a, a default i mean generally speaking i use an array of 60 or higher because i want to average something so uh, i need a mass mass amounts of data and then i actually throw it in there and average it based upon however many uh, elements are in my array but not to get too far into that i just kind of want to give you a couple of examples and hopefully that kind of you know, gave you a, a better introduction. Okay, so we'll close this video out and then we'll pick up and um, start another one and, you know, kind of get a, a, a deeper understanding and, and like another viewpoint of, of using this. All right, well, again, I appreciate you, um, you know, you guys being part of uh, the group and everything. And, and hopefully this was uh, enlightening and helped you understand uh, the basics of a FIFO load and a FIFO unload. Again, our first, first in, first out. So, um, again, thank you and hope everything's going well.